podcast today. My name is Kirsten Lozazo, and I'm a first year student at UC Berkeley, and I'm a part of the California School Based Health Alliance Youth Board. And today I will be moderating today's webinar on an introduction to sexually transmitted infections. This is the second of two youth only webinars we will be hosting this academic year. So thank you all so much for coming out today. So moving on to a little bit about housekeeping. If you do experience difficulties with audio or would prefer higher quality audio, feel free to dial in from the number um, in the invitation link. This webinar is being recorded. However, the chat messages will not be recorded. So feel free to say hi to one another, ask questions, etc. After the webinar, the recording and slides will be posted on the website as well as emailed to you. So feel, and also feel free to ask your questions throughout the webinar. We also will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end. If you would like to remain anonymous, please send your questions to only the hosts and panelists. We won't read your name and we'll make sure that you remain anonymous. But if you are comfortable, go ahead and ask the question to the whole group. Um, in the chat, we have that some students did not register on time, but would like to log in for the training. Of course, I believe that you could still register and join at any point um, right now. Um, we are just about to start our presentation and we'd love to have as many um, attendees as possible. So go ahead and take some time to register and um, join before we get started. We are just going over a little bit about um, the presentation. Oh. Um, it says that the link shut down and is no longer longer able to access the Zoom. Um, Tracy, oh, okay. if you... okay. thank you for passing it on. Let me just check the group chat really quick. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to contact our communications director or our programs assistant to figure that out. But this uh, webinar will be recorded. It will be sent to all of our attendees and I believe all of our registrants as well. Um, so if it doesn't happen or we can't make the link live again to register for the event and for the youth to join in, um, you can definitely forward um, the email that we'll be sending after the webinar to the youth who are interested in attending. Um, they wouldn't be able to get the incentives though, unfortunately. However, uh, you know, they will be able to get the resources that we do put out today. It will be on our website as well. But let me go ahead and contact our um, communications director and our program assistant to see if we can figure something um, out. Thank you for your question though. Christian, go ahead and take it away again. Righty. Thank you, Tracy. So I'm going to talk about the California School-Based Health Alliance, which is the organization that I'm involved in. It is a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in schools. Now, one of the five areas in which we work on, especially is youth development, and part of that is our youth health worker curriculum and the youth board. The youth health worker curriculum is a peer resource meant to help youth learn more about different health topics and give deeper dive into different health professions. And the youth board, which is what I'm a part of, um, is comprised of college age youth who promotes youth engagement at school-based health centers through leadership, advocacy, and networking opportunities. We provide plenty of resources towards youth, some of them including sexual and reproductive health, which is what this webinar will be on, substance use, behavioral health, COVID-19, anti-racism, and many, many more um, resources. You could go ahead and learn more at school schoolhealthcenters.org. And on the website, you can find the link to this recording, as well as past recordings and slides of previous webinars that we've had as well as additional resources. So I will go ahead and introduce our main presenter for today. We have Leonora, who is a Title X coordinator for the Altera Centers for Health, as well as a registered nurse with many years under her belt. So go ahead and take it away, Leonora. 
Hi, everybody. Thank you for being with us today. Um, and uh, I, like uh, Christian said, I've been a nurse for uh, five years and I'm working for uh, a Title 10 and uh, Altura Clinic and cent oh, center, Altura Center for Health. And I do uh, my family uh, planning and birth control. And also uh, we do a test for STI and, and I do treatment. And I also, I am a bilingual, I speak Spanish and English. Next. So uh, who's ready to talk about uh, STI? Let's, let's, um, here you have some information about, um, honestly, uh, our sexual health is worth protecting. So we have a, a lot of uh, sites in there that you can follow information on how to uh, protect your uh, se sexual health and, and it's worth it. Next. Okay, so like I said before, uh, we need to talk about um, STI and, and uh, a lot of people, they don't know what STI stand for. So we can, um, it's, it's a sexually transmitted uh, infection. Okay, so, uh, and, and how do you get STI? Uh, you do get STI by uh, having unprotected sex with the, uh, uh, somebody who has an STI, okay? So, and, and it can be in, in, in a few different form. It can be to skin to skin contact or body fluid. We have few of them, the chlamydia and uh, gonorrhea, those are by body fluid and body fluid could be any like a semen, a vaginal discharge, you know, or like, um, kissing, hugging, holding, you know, and also uh, they can uh, be like uh, the hepatitis A and, and is by, by uh, kissing and, and uh, sometimes it could be by the food. The, the hepatitis B is more, is by uh, a body fluid, but if somebody has uh, hepatitis B and it can be like a uh, some people use uh, IV um, drugs, you know, and stuff like that. And then we have herpes and herpes are um, uh, skin to skin. And we also have um, HIV by body fluid. And then HPV is also a skin by skin. And syphilis is also by um, uh, skin to skin contact. And, and trichomonas also is uh, by body fluid. Um, anybody has a question regarding the um, chlamydia, gonorrhea, hepatitis, any of those STI that are uh, familiar with it? Next. Okay, so the, the, it's very um, uh, simple and you can be being recorded. Is everything okay, Leonora? Internet issues? They, uh, they say that they, they, it came out and said this meeting has been recording. Oh, yes, that's totally fine then. We can hear you, we can see you, you're good to go. Okay, so are we back? Okay. Uh, so um, you can protect yourself and others, you know, by um, practicing safe sex. And that means by you using a condom every time you have a sexual encounter. And uh, the statistics says that the, the condoms are uh, very uh, effectively if you wear them the, the right uh, way they're supposed to, you know, they, they like uh, depend the kind of uh, sexual practice that you have. For example, there's some vaginal sex and there are oral sex and anal sex. And by 91% for anal sex, they will protect you in 80% uh, vaginal sex. And um, I always remember, you know, to make sure that you have the condom available all the time and make sure the uh, expiration time is very important because sometimes people have them because they wanna say, I do have 
condom, but they're not using the proper way. They, they're they not checking them the uh, expiration day. So you, you can make sure that you have a, a good condom available when you are ready to um, have any sexual encounter, okay? So um, for, um, let's, sorry. So we have different kind of condoms. Now that the, the one they recommend are the, the latex one or the, the, the one they are uh, polyutherine uh, and don't uh, because those are very affected and pretty much try to uh, get the one they have lubrication. If the one don't have any lubrication, make sure that you use a lubrication because sex sometimes can be a um, little bit rough and some friction, maybe your condom can, can break, you know? So we don't want that happen. And, and uh, if you're going to um, use lubrication, make sure you apply uh, your condom first and then put your um, lubrication over and that way it will not uh, slip out, okay? And the other thing about uh, they have a lambskin uh, condom, but we don't recommend them to use with uh, multiple partners or for STI because um, or even use for uh, like if you are monogamous with just one person, there's no other partners involved because the porous can be um, uh, too a little bit... Um, in a tiny little um, pores that they can not block the STI in, in especially HIV, okay? Next. Okay, this is like a, a risk is not about you. It's about uh, others too. It's just not you. Like the uh, girl that they say, oh, as an, as an, as an early, we have been together for a while, so getting tests never really crossed my mind. So that a lot of time, some people, uh, they just don't uh, do the test because they are monogamous. But, you know, we recommend to do that at least once a year or the people who are uh, starting a new relationship or end up a new one because it, it, it matters who uh, you have sex with it and uh, how you have sex, you know, the way you practice sex, you know, it can be females to females, male to males, or um, both way, you know, bisexual, you know. And uh, so get uh, your uh, status check, you know, um, you, you need to uh, communicate with your partner and, and understand the, the when you are having sex with one person, you know, like they, they talk about the network over there, it's like uh, you need to know the history of the partner because it matters because if he already had a history of STD or they need to be tested and, and then that way you just not having sex with him. You are saying to like, uh, everybody will be involved in that relationship. The, probably, I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say, but uh, believe it or not, uh, it's, a, it's a, where the, you, who you having sex with it, it, it can be, a little bit uh, scary because it, where you are and like they say here, if, if, if in your community, in your town, you having a lot of um, uh, STI positive, the possibility is that they, if you are not practicing safe sex, you're, not, uh, you're having unprotected sex, the probability is that you probably will be exposed to any STI or any uh, like HIV. Next. And over here, you know, we need to talk about, don't, don't be shy uh, about asking questions. Uh, you need to be honest from the very beginning, you know, start the conversation. Uh, uh, if you have a, like a little background, you know, what you are 
um, know about it or what you have heard from the school or some other um, friends that you have, you know, when you meet somebody, you need to be honest about it and, and uh, making sure that you um, test yourself before you start a relationship and ask like, you know, if you were test, you know, what would your uh, result? And did you um, get medicine? Did you get treated? Because sometimes uh, uh, a lot of people, they're scared to get treatment and get results and they don't come back. So, and, and ask, you know, what kind of relation are you expecting or want to do? You need to just be us only, monogamous, nobody else, or you want casual, you know, that means you are going to be seeing other people like uh, activity, you know, and how comfortable you feel, you know, what you're going to be doing. And uh, the, the most uh, important part is about the preventing uh, methods. What are you planning to use, you know, like uh, um, you planning to have um, sex uh, the first day of your uh, encounter or that will be casual or you expecting to have a little bit longer relation so you can go on and talk to about it uh, and that way you know uh, what you uh, expect from each other so there's a lot of places that they are um, doing that for you you can uh, go to your uh, clinics or you know any places that, that you are available to to go there and get this before you start and then um, over here the, that they say before we take things uh, to the father um, step you know really prefer we both get tested so uh, you can do that and um, like uh, also there are some places online that you can uh, kind of get your uh, testing kit and uh, do it uh, and then you will have your results. It, it will take a little longer. It's not going to be overnight. At the clinics, uh, maybe uh, five to seven days, but that's the most. But there are places online that you can do that. Next. And over here, um, the finding your um, health care provider, you know, uh, you can, uh, like I say, uh, there are some, some sites over here that you can locate where can you find them. And once you are with your provider, you know, you can communicate with um, him or her and um, be honest about uh your how you know um you feel about being there and you came here for uh because you want to have a um a healthy uh a sexual life and you don't want to get any um sti or you know or like um he can uh, guide you the question sometimes uh, it could be you know, like who would you like to have sex with it? Partners and practice, I mean, uh, do you have a sex with girls or boys or uh, both, you know, and what kind of sex you practice? Uh, and then um, do the testing and then uh, what can you do for a preventing method? And one of the are preventing method that they want, it, it works um, 100% uh, from uh, pregnancy and STI is uh, aptens. Aptens mean uh, you wait uh, for the right time for the right person, you know, and, and that way it, it, it will keep you um, healthy and, uh, and you will not be at risk uh, running uh, and getting any uh, STI. Next. Okay, so here, you know, let's see you went to the doctor and the doctor will um, explain you a different kind of test that he can do for you, you know. So uh, don't be scared, don't be afraid, uh, you know, um, how they might be test you, it will give you, you know, like for example, 
for chlamydia, they will only request a urine sample for you. So that is just uh, very, very, it's not very invasive. And then for um, uh, uh, gonorrhea and chlamydia and herpes also can be a, a cotton swab, you know, doctor will do the test. And if you don't know the cotton swab is, um, is uh, they take a, a little sample from your um, genitalia, uh, vagina or penis. And then um, HIV, uh, you will need some blood and, and then HPV, you know, they can do it for um, visual examination. Uh, that means that the girls pretty much when they come and do a pap smear, we, um, take a sample and that sometimes it shows up uh, for HPV positive. And syphilis also can be um, do by uh, blood and uh, trichomonas, it also can be by a cotton swab. But uh, the other one, the HIV, we also have um, some um, uh, oral fluid, uh, actually, they, they, they can be uh, done with a, a new swab and uh, with a cotton swab and your mouth. And also, we do have like a rapid um, HIV test is it, it, here at the clinic for 15 minutes. And also, we'll be doing a, a rapid syphilis test too. So, there are all kinds of uh, sources in there that they can be um, um, done. And also, if your report your results, they come positive for any of those um, STI. Uh, some are curable and, and, and some are uh, manager, you know, that you can uh, take medicine. So uh, don't be afraid and, and just uh, some people just uh, scared and afraid of needles and they don't want to do that, but I do recommend it. Okay, next. And here we are, we do have uh, some prevention uh, for um, like, for example, uh, how can you prevent from getting an STI? Uh, we have um, the uh, H, uh, human papillomavirus, HPV and hepatitis A and B. We have some vaccines. Uh, making sure that you have your immunization update and uh, the P and um, the HPV vaccines, we can get it for uh, boys and girls. And those are when you were like 11, 12 years old, um, it's part of your immunization. So uh, uh, look them up and then if you don't have them, uh, can I uh, go and get them done? It will prevent you uh, for like, especially all the hepatitis B and um, especially there's a chat there and then for HPV vaccine and for the boys, it's also uh, important to get them because it's kind of hard to um, test them and, and, and um, see their status on HPV. And we also have uh, PrEP and PEP. PrEP is a medication that you can take. Uh, you need to come to the doctor and doctor will um, do all the tests you need and to see if you qualify for uh, a PrEP. PrEP, you do have to be HIV negative, okay? So um, that way you can prevent from this PrEP and you can prevent from getting HIV if you having a, a partner who has uh, HIV, you know, you you can take the medicine every day. And then PEP is the one that we can give you uh, for like, uh, if you've been exposed for um, some, you have unprotected sex with somebody that maybe had HIV or you just want to take it because you are, um, thinking that you might be exposed to it, you can take it and uh, for, uh, you have 72 hours. You can go to um, the near hospital or here at uh, our clinic, we, we had the, the program over here. So, so you can come and request it. And then it's, a, it's some medication that you do need to take 72 hours after you were exposed and it's for 28 days, okay? 
And, and then the next one, the TSP is um, so another uh, medication that you take um, while uh, it, it, that, that's the one that you are, your partner is positive for um, HIV and that will prevent for uh, passing it to you. Okay, so it's uh, something that you also need to take uh, every day. And um, next. And here again, we're talking about vaccinations and we have uh, for A and B, you know, like they all, they're recommended to all the children and, and the adults, you know, if you haven't have it that done, you can uh, still get that. Uh, uh, and also the HPV uh, is uh, from 11 to 12, but um, we used to have that we had to be uh, to 29 years, but they, they span that to, um, to 45 years now, because uh, if you are positive for HPV, you are at risk to get uh, genital warts or the um, female can maybe be uh, at risk to get a cervical cancer. And PrEP again, I'm sorry, I, I think I, I did uh, all the vaccines uh, before I moved to this slide and apologize, but um, PrEP means before and then uh, it's prophylactic. And then um, the other one we say it was post is after, you know, it's even post, you know, like I said, we have, um, um, 72 hours to take it before, um, you know, uh, if you think you have unprotected sex or with somebody has HIV. And, and the task again is for people living with HIV to um, help to protect their sexual partners. Next. Questions? I'm sorry. Um. Sorry, no worries. Um, before that, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen um, for the next set of slides. Let's see. Please bear with me, everyone, while I go ahead and do that. There we go. Okay. Go and, uh, and, and next is the um, STI treatment for partners. Um, some places they do have a partner uh, treatment. That means they will be sending the medication if you can positive for example, chlamydia. They will give you the, the medicine for your partner. Our clinic is not doing that uh, unless you come our patient. So uh, what we do over here, if you're positive for chlamydia, we uh, recommend you to um, come together so if he's not a patient, we make your partner our patient and we see you each other. And that way you will have your medicine for uh, chlamydia on the same day and they will get um, acetromycin. And uh, acetromycin will be good for uh, one gram. And if you're positive for um, gonorrhea, you can um, be taking acetromycin. We, uh, or um, diagnose clean, or like, um, or just uh, come to the clinic and we can give you a rosefan uh, injection, which is uh, uh, 500 milligram IEM. And then if you are uh, positive for any um, like um, syphilis, you know, you have to come in to get uh, your, um, injection, which is penicillin, uh, for uh, three injections in, in every week. So there is available for everybody to come in. And then also, like I say, I am Title 10, and we do have a um, um, family pack that they, they can apply for and come in and get uh, test in treatment uh, and uh, birth control from the pack. Uh, family pack. And then, like I say, um, some people do it, but out here you have to become our patient, but you can find other places where you can go and get uh, treatment. Okay, next. 
Thank you, Leonora. Um, now I will go ahead and walk everybody through finding a Title X health clinic um, close to them. So the link uh, is on the slide. Again, just to reiterate, we will be sending the slides and the recording of this webinar after um, the webinar ends. And so you could go ahead and um, go to this link um, just a little walkthrough, you enter in your address and it'll pop up all of the health clinics that are closest for to you. And then you could go ahead and look more in depth into the clinic services, hours of operation, physical address, as well as get directions. So now I will go ahead and do the whole process myself. I'll go ahead and share my screen. And so here we are on the website. Uh, Family Planning Clinic is also a Title X health clinic. I will go ahead and use the address for the CSHA um, base. Presentation Parkway, and I will search. And then so after just inputting um, my address, um, as you can see on the left-hand side, we have four locations within 10 miles. You could always expand or, or reduce uh, your distance depending on your means of transportation. And on the right-hand side is just sort of a map geographically to help you like situate yourself where the closest ones are. And so, for example, I'm going to look at the health clinic um, with the City of Berkeley Health Department at the Berkeley Technology Academy, and I'm going to view details. And you could go ahead and see the hours of operation, the mailing address, um, services offered, as Leonardo was saying about um, some of the treatments and some of the preventative measures that um, relate to STIs and STDs. And then you could press get directions um, to take you to Google Maps and you can see ways to get there via car, public transportation, walking, cycling, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, if you have more questions on how to um, locate a Title X health center, you could also we go to the CSHA Instagram and we have infographics that'll walk you through the steps. And I will pass it on to Leonora for any questions. Any questions? Mm -hmm. We have Did a question uh, that says, how old do you need to be for FPACT? Um, oh, we recommend that the soon you start sectionally active from um, 12 and up. Well, um, I think that question is asked for family pack. Oh, the same, the same thing, uh, because we keep it confidential. And, and that the, the, that's why we had that uh, over here for family pack. I'm sorry, I misunderstand the question. Uh, we do offer uh, from uh, 12 and up, uh, they can come and apply for it and it's all confidential. Uh, parents don't have to know, but we always recommend to have somebody with them, a friend or somebody to, they know um, they are here. And then if, uh, you know, they decide to uh, do um, the test or they have a support, somebody to be there and supporting their decision. Next. Um, go ahead, everyone can use the chat, the Q&A. If you, again, to reiterate, um, you could click to send chat to hosts and panelists if you would like to remain anonymous, or if you feel comfortable, you could go ahead and just send your message to the whole group. Um, I guess a question that I had for you, Leonora, is sort of what do you do as a Title X health coordinator and sort of your responsibilities and sort of your daily tasks that you have to do? Okay, um, what I do is um, somebody come in for um, birth control, for example, we have um, 
mother bring the teenager, you know, and, and um, she is, um, mother is supporting her. So she started being sexually active. So I go and I go over all with all the, uh, the um, options that I have. Uh, I give it to her all the options that they can be and what kind of birth control they can be and how to uh, approach to start their sexual uh, life. You know, um, uh, how are they protecting themselves? Are they uh, ha having, uh, you know, what kind of um, sexual activity, you know, they're having and in, in, in what have they used, you know, any unprotected sex or, or are they using condom? Because I emphasize on the, the condom is a must this day. It has to be aware because it, it has to be embedded in, in, in because um, that will prevent them from uh, getting any STI, uh, HIV, or even pregnancy. And then uh, once I, um, I um, go over with that, we, we ask them to say, do you want to be tested? And they agree, we send them the urine and we test them and they, uh, let's see, they come positive. I call them in, we give them results and we treat them. And we give them the, uh, uh, the precaution, no sex for seven days and uh, tell all your partners and in and, and that way they can all come in and if they don't have a, uh, insurance so they want to apply for family pack they're welcome and uh, we see them back in four weeks to retest them another question that we had was do I sign up for family pack at the health clinic or do I do it somewhere online at the clinic they come here and they talk to the unit secretary and they tell them i am uh, interested in birth control and std and i want to apply for family pack and once uh, they go through they sign up and they uh, they can be seen the same day they do have to come in like 15 minutes early you know so they can call make an appointment and say i want to apply for family pack mm -hmm. And is there an age limit to use family pack? No, no age limit. Okay. Um, oh, we have a question. It says, do our parents have to know if we do the test? No, they don't. They had to, that's why I say we offer them confidentiality that when they come here, uh, the parents don't need to know. And, and some, some um, kids uh, are um, under uh, their insurance. So that's why they say they need to tell them at the desk right away, they want to be confidential. So if they apply for family pack, it will be all confidential. Uh, we have a question that says, um, is this clinic just for women? Um, maybe you could talk about like women oriented or female identifying clinic or health services. It's for, it's, uh, for everybody. We see uh, female, male, uh, you know, um, I, uh, um, they, we have um, gay, lesbian, you know, we have transfers. We have all, all kinds of people, they come to our clinic and uh, they they can call, like I say, make an appointment and uh, we um, offer our service to everyone. Uh, we have, what do we need to take to a clinic in order to get tested? Do we need ID, insurance, et cetera? Uh, what we need, uh, it will be the, the ID, you know, with the identified, you know, like uh, the driver license or the ID card that they get before they get the driver license, you know, and, and they will not be um, 
if they are under the uh, parents' insurance, so they're gonna, they, if they, like I say, if they don't want parents to know, tell them it's confidential or just sign up for family pack and it will be all confidential. Uh, we have a question that says, will our test results be reported anywhere? Um, there are a few reportable STD. Uh, chlamydia is not reportable. You know, that, that, yeah, that they come and, and get treatment and we don't have to report it, um, but we do have to report it to uh, the um, to Larry Health um, clean, uh, Department and which are gonorrhea, uh, HIV and uh, syphilis. Those are reportable, but by mean, uh, they're not going to um, go and get them, you know, if they come here and do the treatment, they get all their, their treatment done. And, and then the, the, the city, the county will have um, a little bit uh, of their information that they did test for um, uh, syphilis or gonorrhea, but their um, mean uh, is to know they got treated and that they got ready as infection. That's, that's why we, they, they do when they mean report it. Uh, question says, does family packet include counseling services in case you need to talk to someone about your concerns? Unfortunately, uh, no. It, we we only cover um, STD and um, treatment and family planning, uh, like I said, birth control. But we do have some social worker here. They they can we can make an appointment. Uh, but I don't think a family pack will cover that unless they have other sort of insurance. Um. Another question says, can you be asymptomatic? And if so, like how should you go about testing? Uh, there, um, sometimes uh, some uh, STD, they are like chlamydia, is silent. Is they, sometimes you don't get any sign and symptom until you, somebody text you or tell you, you know, go and check yourself because I was test positive for chlamydia. So you come here and you have no signs and symptoms, but what they need to look for, like sometimes it could be, you know, from uh, like uh, one day to 14 days, they can have uh, some kind of discharge uh, for, uh, for the boys. They might have some uh, penile discharge or they might have some uh, burning when they go um, uh, doing a urine or when they have intercourse, it, it will be uh, that kind of um, sign and symptom. And for the girl will be pretty much like uh, the, the burning and it hurt when they have an intercourse, some kind of discharge is sometime her uh, period will be kind of off. Another question says, what happens if I have an STI and don't know about it because I'm asymptomatic? Are there long-term health effects? Uh, there are, uh, for like chlamydia, for example, is uh, female or males don't get treatment um, right away. They uh, couldn't become sterile. And the, like, and the girls can get into their uh, reproductive system, their uh, pelvic and a fallopian tube and ovary, and then they can have like a pelvic inflammatory disease and they can have, uh, they cannot have any kids. And uh, males also can have, uh, they can have, they can become infertile or they can have problem with the prostate later down in, in their life. So that's what we recommend to if you're having any kind of symptoms or you are seeing somebody or not sure or you have unprotected sex and, and you are wanting to know, test yourself right away. Um, 
there's another question that says, how does contact tracing work? Um, am I supposed to um, message all of my partners or is there a service provided by the clinic to provide contacts um, and sexual partners and that they'll be text? Uh, we normally tell them to contact their partners who they have intercourse for the last two months and they need to contact them, especially chlamydia is not uh, reportable. So we don't know who uh, been having uh, sex with it. So we cannot contact them, but they can do it the, the, the preferred way they want it. They, they want it to make a phone call or they want to text them, you know, depend how, what uh, situation is their dating or just for casual sex or the dating app, you know, end up in there, you know, so we recommend them to uh, tell the, their partners. Um. Uh, going, uh, Christian, mm -hmm. uh, can I can I go back on, on the other um, STD, the one they are uh, they are like I say reportable, and if they don't treat themselves like gonorrhea, it will be the same thing. It will be very uh, bad for them. They will get uh, very sick, and it will damage their reproductive system. They can become sterile and um, syphilis can be really bad for uh, the um, for them if they don't take care of it it could go any part of the body they can go to the brain to the lung to the bones you know to the eyes so it, it will miss their nervous system and in in HIV you know uh, if you're positive for HIV uh, we um, had to that's one thing we had to report and we referred you out to our uh, infectious uh, specialists that we have and they can take care of them right away they they start on medicine and and they they will follow their case but there is like a as manager is is um it can be uh it's not cured but they can start taking medicine as soon they find out mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question that says, if I don't take my medications properly, will I develop resistance against the medications? Uh, yes, it could happen. You know, if you're not uh, doing that the way the doctor prescribed it, it, it like it has happening with uh, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is getting uh, very resistant that we had to um, change the amount of medication they're getting because they are getting resistant because they're not taking the medicine they, they, the way they should or they um, not coming back for retest and, and, and they keep reinfecting. They don't uh, notify their partner and they keep having intercourse with the same people who infect them. So it can be resistant. So it'll be harder to get ready of it. Um, there's another question that says, are there any um, possible side effects to any of the medications that you mentioned earlier? Um, yes, uh, there are side effects, unfortunately, but um, it, it weighs out that to have the disease or living with it or not uh, having any, um, like for example, a chlamydia, let's see, is the most uh, common and in, in you will have some uh, nausea, some uh, upset stomach, maybe some diarrhea. You know, those are very mild um, side effects. But when we go on and we talk about the, the PrEP and PEP and all those, they do have some side effect. And some people do better on, on side effect that they don't get at all. So all depend how uh, the people are going to react, their medicine, their body, you know, react. everybody react differently. Let's see, 
questions? Any, any more, more questions? Questions. If there are no other questions, it's okay as well. Just letting everyone know. But if you do have any questions, feel free to like put it in the group chat, put it um, to host and panelists, put it in the Q&A box, whichever way you'd like to do it. Um, but if there's no other questions, we can definitely transition over to our last slide. Let me just go ahead and share my screen for that. All right, well, thank you all so much for attending our webinar. Um, we hope that this better informed you on sexually transmitted infections and diseases and all of our contacts for the California School-Based Health Alliance is on the left. And additionally, the emails to Leonora and Tracy, our CSHA administrator, are located right here. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, additionally, after this webinar, there will be a five question multiple choice evaluation that will automatically pop up. Um, it's just for a survey purposes to see how we could better improve our webinars and how all of our presenters did. Um, so go ahead and fill that out. And I just wanted to take a second to thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Leonora, for the amazing um, presentation and information. Thank you, Tracy, for navigating all of our tech issues. And we hope you found this webinar helpful. And we hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You can go ahead Thank and log off Zoom now. Thank you, everybody, and good questions. Awesome. So I think we can go ahead and end the webinar recording. Let me just go ahead and...